Hi, this is Dr. Eric Westman with Ask Adapt, and today's session is on cholesterol. The first thing about cholesterol is I have to explain that while it is a predictor or risk factor for heart disease, cholesterol in all of its ways, however you call it, was not put in the body to become a problem. It's there to provide a function for the body. And in fact, we couldn't live without cholesterol. Uh, if you think about it, a, an egg is the perfect food nutritionally because you can make an entire chicken out of an egg. It has all the nutrients that are necessary, including a lot of cholesterol. So don't worry about eggs. We'll get to that in a second. But uh, so first, I ask people to calm down when you're thinking about cholesterol, have a rational discussion. You're not on the edge of a cliff ready to fall off. That's what danger is. And if doctors instill the fear of danger by doing something or not doing something, I apologize for them. Uh, you have to have a rational conversation. First step about cholesterol is there's an old way of looking at the blood cholesterol panel, and there's a new way of looking at the blood cholesterol panel. The old way is to look at total cholesterol and LDL, LDL being the lousy cholesterol, it was called. And the new way is looking at the triglyceride and HDL, HDL meaning healthy. Triglyceride is actually also bad. So think of triglyceride as something you wanna have low, HDL is something you wanna have high, for people who do low carb, do LCHF or keto, sometimes there's an increase in LDL and total cholesterol. Most of the time, almost all the time, there's a reduction in triglyceride and an increase in HDL. So depending on how you look at the lipid profile, it may look really great or it may look not so great. Um, and I talk about this all the time. Another important point is it's, there's no one number that you treat in the blood cholesterol and there's no uh, number that would make me worried. It's the total context of the person. So you consider the age, your gender, your family history, your blood pressure, whether you have diabetes. In fact, there's a new uh, guideline calculator that's available to anyone online called cvriskcalculator.com, CV for cardiovascular disease, and you can put in your numbers. I'll do this with some people in the clinic in the office and when you look on the CV risk calculator, LDL isn't even on it anymore. So there's been a big change in how you look at the lipid profile, the cholesterol in the blood. Take a look at CV risk calculator. Now to the questions. Hi, Dr. Westman. Ruth says, hi Ruth. When I eated, started eating this way, my cholesterol almost became normal. On my last cholesterol test, however, my total went up to 275, my LDL 201. Triglycerides improved to 58, as did HDL of 62, the LDL of 12, which is excellent. What do these numbers mean? Well, again, there's the whole context of who you are and your risk, but this is pretty classic that the total and the LDL can go up, but the triglyceride went down and the HDL, the good cholesterol, went up. So I wouldn't worry about this kind of pattern if there wasn't any other reason to worry about um, the cholesterol in context of the blood pressure or the person involved. Um, the uh, idea that cholesterol can change is a fascinating one. It's not a something that stays exactly the same. And the more it's being tested, the more you monitor it. There are engineers who are doing that now and posting their results. Uh, it's actually a very dynamic condition or situation. And my hunch and what I see is that it's not the same kind of system when you're not eating carbohydrates. So a lot of the expectation or belief that what happened when people were eating carbohydrates will always happen in people who don't eat carbohydrates is not coming true. So I don't even think the cholesterol levels mean the same thing. But again, if you look at the LDL going up, there's a small LDL, there's a large LDL. You can get that um, uh, tested. Gene asks, what do cardiologists uh, have uh, the ability to measure these particle tests, yes, but any doctor can do that. And in fact, you can get that done at LabCorp in most places. It's called an NMR lipo profile or a VAP test. The more you look at the LDL cholesterol, the big, light, fluffy ones are not as bad as the small, uh, dense ones. 
And if you want to get that tested, you can. Uh, any doctor can order that, um, not just cardiologists. Um, uh, Diane says, I had my wellness checked recently. My total LDL is 350, and my LDL 230. Again, as we discussed, that doesn't bother me. Um, glucose of 70, which is perfect. Uh, HDL 98, which is fantastic. Triglycerides 101, which is fantastic. So uh, when you look at, these are all milligram per deciliter or, or, or the um, US units. I, um, but uh, that's why I'm saying if it's good or bad. Um, so the triglyceride and HDL ratio, if it's about one, or if, the, if it, the HDL is the numbers greater than the triglyceride, this is an excellent metabolic situation. In fact, if you compare the triglyceride and HDL ratio to whether you have small LDL particles, it, it correlates really well. So if your triglyceride to HDL ratio is under one, it's very unlikely that you have any small LDL in your blood. Um, of course, um, the advanced course is uh, take a look at the book that Jimmy Moore and I wrote called Cholesterol Clarity. In there, the new scientists all tell the story about how atherosclerosis or heart disease begins with inflammation, and then the cholesterol goes to town if there's inflammation. That's another reason why these numbers are not so concerning to me, because if you follow the low carb lifestyle and your inflammation has gone way down, then these particles and whatever you, the cholesterol you want to talk about don't do the same sort of damage as they would have before. Um, in my view, the, the most important thing is having a normal blood pressure, if you can. And that's more important than any blood cholesterol level. Um, Laura asks, how do you improve your HDL good cholesterol? By eating more fat, by eating more eggs. So uh, I know we've been taught not to eat those things, and I wonder if that's why we have such a metabolic issue. Many, many people have low HDLs, perhaps because they're not eating enough fat and eggs. Um, Judy um, asked, what, what about warfarin? So a blood thinner um, like warfarin, which is uh, partially uh, affected by the amount of greens and vitamin K that you eat, you just have to be careful to eat about the same amount of uh, leafy greens every day. At the beginning, we look at about a cupful or a fistful of greens, and you just wanna monitor your blood level to make sure that that's okay. Amy says, three generations of women in my family have very high LDLs, including myself. I was put on Lipitor, which a lot of doctors do for just an LDL. I don't think that's a very good thing anymore. And most doctors and most guidelines don't just follow the LDL cholesterol anymore. Um, but my LDL increased from 230 to 308. My doctor is alarmed. I need to lose more weight and I'm begging her to, well, so first, um, when you're losing weight, the cholesterol levels can change in a way that are not the same as when you're at your final goal. So I would encourage you to, or discourage you to not uh, check the cholesterol levels while you're losing weight. Wait until you get to the goal. And I know you may have to teach your, your doctor about that. Um, most doctors are not trained in this uh, or even in weight loss itself. So um, I don't worry about that as a special or um, exact number, Amy, because uh, the other HDL and triglycerides are doing better and you're still losing weight. Um, and that says, I've heard low carb keto can mess with our labs early on. I'm six weeks in and getting labs done. I already warned my doctor that I'm doing keto. Um, how long does it take? Well, again, I, I'm not worried about the cholesterol. Other doctors are. Um, and um, I've been looking at cholesterol panels now for 10 years in the clinic. And that was after 10 years of research uh, before opening our clinics. Um, um, I, I would discourage checking the cholesterol while you're losing weight. Wait until you're at your goal. When you look at the pattern of cholesterol and how the time frame of how things change, triglycerides change pretty quickly in a week or two. So you'll see a triglyceride go from 500 to 150 in two weeks. The HDL cholesterol may take six months, 12 months, may take a couple of years for the full effect of the HDL going up. It keeps going up over time. It's not uncommon for me to see people with HDL cholesterols of 80 or 100 
which are really high, they're protective against the heart disease, which is what we're trying to prevent. That's another last point that there's no disease of high cholesterol. That what we're trying to do with cholesterol is prevent the heart disease, the stroke, the vascular disease that is, we think, created by that abnormal cholesterol pattern. Uh, there was a great um, essay written by Dr. Asim Mulhaltra in the UK about how saturated fat is not the cause of heart disease. Heart disease is actually an inflammatory condition. Check it out if you want more details about that. Again, I'm Dr. Eric Westman for Ask Adapt. Follow us, click on, uh, on uh, follow, and you'll, you won't miss out on any future videos. Please comment, ask us questions. I hope that's helpful.